everyone and welcome to another episode of Staff Vlogs and today I'm going to talk about a question that one of my clients asked me. So this question is, what are the investment opportunities here in Cagayan de Oro? So usually when my clients ask me that, I also answer in a question that I ask them what are they looking for, what are their investment goals. And the thing is, for this particular client, she didn't really quite know. She, she wasn't really sure what they wanted. So this is actually a common thing that happens to some of my clients, wherein they do have the capacity to invest, but they're just not sure where they're going to place their money or how it's going to work. So today, I'm going to rephrase that question, and I'm going to ask it in this way. What are the ways that you can invest in real estate here in Cagayan de Oro? So for this particular episode, I'm going to show you three ways of how you can invest here in CDO and even in your own city. So those three ways are number one, land banking, number two, buy and sell, and number three, rentals. So let's tackle the first one. So the first one is land banking. So what does land banking mean? It means that you buy a property, usually a lot, and you keep it for a certain uh, time, you keep it for a certain time, and then you resell it in the future. So when you do land banking, you have to be prepared to be invested for quite some time because you have to wait for the price of the lot to appreciate. So let me give you guys an example. So here in Cagayan de Oro, we have Ventura Residences, which is part of Savior Estates. So way back in 2016, the developer, A Brown Company, offered these lots on sale at 7,500 per square. Now today, these same lots, exactly the same location, are now selling for 14,250 per square. Now that is appreciation. Now the thing with land banking is that you can't really predict when it's going to rise, but you do know that it will rise. It will go up in price. So you just have to really wait for it to happen. So the pros of land banking is one, there's no maintenance whatsoever. You just purchase the lot, you pay subdivision dues, and that's it. By the time you're ready to sell, even if it's like already been 20 years and you haven't done anything to the lot, it's fine because it really requires very little maintenance to none at all. So that's the pro. Another pro is of course appreciation. Appreciation is for sure, it's gonna happen unless there's gonna be like things like flooding or um, what do you call that, landslides. But for most cases, these lots really will appreciate over time. And the third advantage is it's also easier to dispose because it doesn't have a building, so it doesn't have to suit a particular preference of the buyer. So usually buyers will just buy the lot as it is because they're after the location. So those are the pros of land banking. The cons on the other hand is that there is no passive income involved. So that means you won't be getting any return of your money until such time that you actually sell the property that you bought. Alright, so let's talk about the second option which is buy and sell. So when I say buy and sell, just for the purpose of this video, we're going to classify it as when you bought it pre-selling and then you're going to buy it once the property is already available. So pre-selling is when developers sell their projects even when the project or the house or the condo building is not yet available. Let's say, for example, the developer is selling a condominium building and all you can see right now is just the land. So you buy it pre-selling and usually the rates are much lower. So the pros of buying and selling, pre-selling is that one, you get the property at a cheaper price because again, it's still pre-selling, the building doesn't exist yet, so the developer will definitely price it lower. And then 
next is there will always be price increases. So these price increases don't just happen once, they happen a lot over a period of time. So let's say for example, let's talk about a project by Avida here in Cagayan de Oro and that's what's called Centrio, Centrio Tower. So Centrio Tower is just behind Centrio Mall. So when Centrio Tower was first selling, it was selling at around 1.6, 1.7 million for their studio unit. And today, Avida is also selling another tower very close by and they're selling their, their studio units for 2.8, 2.9 million. So you see there's a very big difference between the two. So right now, you can also sell your Centrio studio unit for around 2.9. So that's the value of buying and selling. So the cons though, when you do buy and sell, is that selling isn't really that quick. It doesn't happen immediately. So you also have to have that waiting time. You have to wait for the right buyer to come and purchase your property. So another con of that is when you're trying to sell it quickly, when you need to sell it already, you do have the competition which is the developer themselves let's say for example they started pre-selling their units and they still have inventory available by the time that the building is already available so that means they will also be selling their inventory and now they become the developer becomes your competition okay so let's talk about option number three and that is leasing so when we do leasing of course, you get to have that monthly income coming in and eventually as you pay off your loan, it's going to be what we call as passive income. So that's the great thing about leasing. So I'm going to talk about house leasing and condominium leasing because there will be a difference between the two. So let's talk about the house leasing first. So when you do house leasing, the pros of that is that you get to have longer term clients. Clients will be staying for at least six months or one year. That's the usual rental term. And that means, of course, less maintenance. And you also, you don't have to keep on looking for tenants all the time. And the cons, though, about house and lot leasing is that sometimes some, division, some subdivisions will have their own rules. Let's say, Savior Estates, for example, does not allow rentals or leasing that's below six months. So you will have to be constrained by that and most of the time you cannot really use platforms such as Airbnb for shorter time, shorter term rentals. Although it does depend on the subdivision because there are other subdivisions that are really just relaxed on that. And as for the condominiums, so condominiums you usually have shorter term rentals for that. You can do daily rates. And that also means bigger income because if you are leasing a, a condominium for a day rate, so that's obviously much higher than what you would charge if you ask for a monthly rate. So let's say for example, I have a client who owns a unit in Centria Tower and she does a daily rate of 2000 per day. So if you multiply that by 30 days in a month, you can obviously see how big the income potential is and that's just for one studio unit. Of course, the cons of condominium is that eventually there, there's going to be a lot of units available so you do have that competition and at the same time there's going to be a lot of maintenance as well in terms of cleaning the unit and really taking care of the unit if you're going to do it on a daily rate. So, Given these three options, land banking, buy and sell, and leasing, so it really depends on, on the client as to what is their appetite for investment. If they, don't, if they want a hassle-free investment where they just buy and sell it, so obviously land banking would be good. But if the client also wants to have passive income and rental returns faster, monthly returns then they could do condominium airbnb stuff so the takeaway though is that when you invest in real estate you really have to think about the longer term so i always feel that clients who invest in real estate are visionaries they tend to see at a longer term than anybody else 
And also, the good thing about real estate is that appreciation is just really for sure. It's just really going to happen. It's also less volatile than the stock market or other investment opportunities. So real estate is really quite stable and that's what I love about this business. So these are just some tips that I can give you if you're thinking about investing in real estate. And there is so much more to cover, to be honest, about this topic. So if you are interested in investing in Cagayan de Oro and you want to know what are your opportunities in terms of land banking, in terms of um, buying, pre-selling, and in terms of leasing, please do let me know. You can always just contact me and we can talk about it. So see you again in the next episode, you guys, and thank you for watching. Bye!